Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So let us continue with solving dynamic programming problems. And before we begin today's video, I would like to take some time to talk about this ebook. It is on data structures and algorithms. It has 90 plus DS algo chapters and also like a bonus, it has 15 plus HR questions. So if you are preparing for coding interviews, uh, are sitting for placement or something like that, or even off campus, wherever, usually HR round will be the last round and obviously DS algo will be asked. So this book is uh, having all those things and you won't have to scatter your brain everywhere to find other resources. I'll just quickly take you through the contents. Like see, there is uh, introduction, which is about time complexity, space complexity. There is sorting algorithms. All the sorting algorithms are there. Most important are merge and quick sort. Searching algorithms are there, binary search, and uh, even uh, linear data structures, and tree data structures, graph data structure, as well as recursion, dynamic programming, backtracking, all those concepts are explained. And if I click on any one, for example, you can click on any link and it will take you directly to that page. And you can see that the code snippets are given and also there'll be many places with pictorial representation. So you can check that out also. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. Please do check it out. It's for a very affordable price. So let us see today's problem. Today's problem is known as a word break problem. So we are given a string and a dictionary of words. And we have to find out if A can be segmented into space separated sequence of dictionary words. So what does it mean? And also there is one more thing to note that from the dictionary, each word can be taken any number of times in any order. So it means that, for example, if I have a dictionary like uh, there is one word I, and there is one word am, and there is one word say Aditya. Okay. And so this is my dictionary. And if my string is something like Aditya, I am. Like imagine that this is one complete word. Okay. This is one complete word. Now this is in this string, we have to check if it can be broken into some number of words such that if we join all those words, we will get this string obviously, as well as all those broken words are in the dictionary. For example, I can break this as Aditya, I am. We can see that all these three are present in the dictionary. Now order and number of times as it is mentioned here, it can be any number of times. So suppose instead of this string, for example, if uh, the string was I am I, suppose for example, see I is appearing two times, I is a word in the dictionary, okay? So this is also fine. Basically we have to tell can it be broken? And remember one thing that empty string is always possible. So that is what we have to assume that if a string is empty, it is always possible because it need not be broken anyhow. And anyway, it is empty. So it is possible. So if, if the string is empty, we have to return true. Remember that. So this is the problem. Okay. This it's a simple problem to like understand, but how do we get the algorithm now? So, okay. Now what we, I'll do is. Uh, let us consider the GFG example here. The second example we'll consider. The string is I like Samsung. Okay, so let me write that down. So it is I like Samsung. And remember, this is one string only. It is, I mean, it does not have any space. Like, don't, just because I'm writing it with little space, don't assume that, okay? So now what are we supposed to do? Now just observe. We have to find out whether this string can be made in such a way that we can break the st strings into some words and join them. And those words are in the dictionary. Basically for this string, we should return either true or false. Correct. Either we can make it or we can't make it. So true or false only we should return. So we have to know how to make this string. 
Now to know if I can make this train, I can divide this problem into sub problems such that I will get the answer for each problem of each sub problem and I can build the answer for this large problem, which means to say, for example, now I am considering the string starting from 0 to n minus 1, where n is equal to length of the string, correct? So, so what happens is now for this string I am considering, for example, if suppose I consider i equal to say 4, that means from 0 to 4, the string 0 to 4, the substring, I should say substring, which means if I consider only this much part, see this is the entire string. Now if I consider only the substring part and if I get to know that this small string can be made by breaking it and basically this can be made with the, by breaking it and those words are in the dictionary. Then for this much part, if I get the answer as true, then I should check only for remaining part. So if remaining part is also true, that means when both these parts can be made, then the entire string also can be made. What I'm trying to say is we should divide the problem into sub problems and at every index, every index we should check if we can form the string from zero to that index, if we can form that, what does it mean form the string? It means that it can be broken into smaller word, uh, strings, which are words in the dictionary. It can be broken into smaller strings, which are words in the dictionary. For example, see, I like, if I consider the substring of this entire string, I like, okay. Now I like can be made because if you see the dictionary here, the dictionary has I and like, it can be made. But how will I get to know I like can be made? For me to get to know I like can be made, I should get to know that I can be made. See, I can be made as well as like is in the dictionary. Like this word like is present in the dictionary. Then only I will get to know I like is made. So. When we are talking about this big problem, we first divide it into a smaller sub problem I like. Now I like is again divided into a smaller sub problem and finally we get to know that I can be made. So once we get to know I can be made, then we have to check if the remaining part that is like, is it present in the dictionary or not? If it is present in the dictionary, yes. If it is not present in the dictionary, then I cannot make it. So. That is what, uh, it's not a very hard problem, but we just have to get the initial thought. So I will tell you now what I'm saying. I will dry run and take every example. Okay. So now I will maintain a DP array of size N plus one, where N is the length of the string. And what will DP of I tell me? DP of I will tell me can I make the string that is from index zero to I, can I make it? Or I should say I minus one because it is one a zero based indexing, right? So can I make the string, which means that can I break it into smaller strings, which are words in the dictionary. So basically DP of this, this DP array will have either one or zero boolean value but one or zero only you can consider okay now let us say let us take this string let us say i is equal to one now i'll run another loop j is equal to zero to j is equal to i minus one okay i will check for dp of j why i'm checking dp of j See, what did I tell you? First, I have to get to know that some part of the string can be made. Then I can check for remaining part, whether it's in dictionary or not. I will tell you now. See, first of all, base case is DP of zero is equal to one. Because if it is an empty string, obviously it can be made. Okay, that is the assumption that we have to take in this problem. Okay, so now what is DP of J? 
what is j first j is zero so if dp of j is true then we have to do something correct then we will generate the remaining part of the substring so we will say another string called substring is equal to our current string substring and from which index from j to i minus j see i is initially 1 and we are starting j from 0 so what is this substring going to be it is going to be substring of 0 comma 1 now what is substring 0 comma 1 in the main string it is equal to i correct now i am checking if i is present in dictionary so you should check if i is present is i present in the dictionary yes i is present okay so what i will do if i is present then i will say dp of i is equal to 1 which means what which means i can form that word i can form the word starting from index 0 like i can form the first uh, word first that string is there now i i can form that now this is a sub problem again continue the same logic for other pro, uh, other cases and keep moving your i pointer so when i will reach uh, this part like okay when i will reach here then what will happen j will start from zero and we will get to know that dp of 1 or j is true which means we will get to know that we can make i it is for sure that is why we are stored in the dp array we can make the word i now remaining word is like can we make it how do we get to know just check if it is in the string or not so is like present yes check in the dictionary sorry check if it is in the dictionary so like is also present so dp of i now again will become one like that even samsung is present right so when i reaches this last character g then our j will again start from zero and it will go over here it will reach this index e and then it will say okay dp of j is possible that means i like is possible and is samsung present so i like is already possible that is stored in the dp array that answer is true now remaining part is of samsung that remaining substring is it present in the dictionary yes if it is present then this entire word can be formed so that is what i said break the problem into small sub problems find the answer for them and then only thing in this problem is you need to just generate the substring and when you generate substring keep in mind when you are saying uh, you are generating substring from 0 to 1 this 1 is going to be length so basically in this case substring 0 comma 1 will be i only okay substring 0 comma 1 will be i only just keep that in mind maybe some error sometimes you might do like don't write i minus j plus 1 and all that so now let us code the problem and we will see the solution. So first of all, I need to know the length of the string. So let n be equal to s dot length. Now I will take a dp array of size n plus 1 and I will set all the values to 0. Okay, initially all the values are 0 and the base case is dp of 0 is equal to 1 so this is the base case and now let us say for int i equal to 1 i less than or equal to n plus plus i outer loop is for checking the every length of the string starting from index 0 can i form that string and when i say form it means that can i break that small string into strings such that those word those strings are words in the dictionary so now let us take int j equal to uh, 0 j less than i plus plus j okay if dp of j is possible 
what does it mean dp of j is possible it means that the string starting from the first until the jth character that string that much string it is possible to make it so that much is already calculated we don't have to calculate it again now what is the remaining string remaining string will be uh so remaining string will be what s dot substring uh, uh, j and i minus j so from j to the length i 0 to j done now j to the length i that we have to check if it is present in the dictionary or not now this part of checking whether it is present in dictionary it can be made much more efficient you can put it in unordered set or you can put it in a map and you can check it okay i am just directly checking it because in this example the test cases are very lenient but you can put it in an unordered set or in a map and then you can check it with that so i'll just check directly here so i am just checking if uh, the, the remaining uh, substring the remaining part of that string is present in the dictionary or not that should be a word in the dictionary correct so how to check that if it is not equal to dictionary dot n fine then i will say dp of i equal to one because it means that i can make that string that complete string now from starting to i i can make it so when i know i can make it i don't have to process further if i get one single answer it is fine so i will break it i will break the loop and finally what i should return i should return dp of n because dp of n will tell whether i can form the string uh, the original string or not so let's see if i have not made any silly mistake so as you can see we are getting the correct answer on submission and just remember that in this this statement here it can be optimized further i guess i think you can use some extra space uh, maybe take another uh, like take a unordered set and store all those words the dictionary words there that is also fine okay so yeah that is the problem and one more thing to observe is that this this word right i like samsung it can be seen like this it can be either i like and samsung three different words so it can be i like samsung or it can also be four different words i like sam sung so sam is also a word in the dictionary and sung is also another word and samsung together also is a word okay so it can be split in multiple ways you may feel that why should we break from here because whenever we get one way to make the string we don't have to bother about other ways they are not asking us find out number of ways if you just find out number of ways then i think you have to put some count plus plus over here i think i am not sure exactly maybe check that out so what i'm trying to say is if they ask find out how many ways are there to make the word then i think you should put count plus plus here or instead of no actually you should not put count plus plus instead of dp of i equal to 1 i think you should increment dp of i yeah you should just increment then what will happen that that time dp of i will represent how many ways are there to form the string from 0 to i so that that is another variation of this problem and maybe you can solve that easily now once you know how to solve this so this was a easy solution dynamic programming with strings i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you understood and you are able to code successfully by yourself if you really liked it hit the like button share the video with all your friends as much as possible please subscribe to the channel you have been motivating me a lot thank you for that and until the next video take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye